Hey students, welcome back to the unit on area of polygons. And we're going to wrap this whole bad boy up with one more lesson regarding trigonometry and area. That's right, the return of trig. So let's jog our memories when it comes to trigonometry super quick, shall we? We have to remember about right triangles and trigonometric ratios of the segment lengths in reference to a particular angle of that triangle. So in this particular set of notes, we have the, we're talking about angle A. And the sine is the opposite side of the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent side of the hypotenuse, leg I should say. And then the tangent is the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. And remember good old chief Sokotoa. So we're doing a quick review of what we did in trigonometry back in chapter 8. So if this is confusing already, stop. Go back to chapter eight, look up some stuff about trig. Exciting. Now, why are we bringing this back now? Because uh, we're gonna talk about triangles again. Now, if you recall the area of any triangle, right? if you recall the area formula for any triangle, the area of a triangle, is 1 half base times height. right? So remember that from, from good old memory lane. The area of any triangle is 1 half base times height. Well, now we're gonna use trigonometry to, to give you a, a new formula. <laughs> so what happens with the area of a triangle given side angle side of that triangle? Like, you know, one of the side lengths a given angle and the, uh, and the other side length. Well, the area of the triangle then is half the product of the lengths of the two sides and the sine of the included angle. So in terms of this picture, imagine, imagine if we knew the length of B and C. And this is not a right triangle, right? So let's, let's, let's imagine we knew those lengths and uh, we knew angle A. So the formula for the area of this triangle is 1 half B times C and then times the sine of A. Now you might be thinking, holy cow, Mr. Katz, how, how are we going to have a whole new formula? I thought the area of a triangle was really simple. 1 half base times height. And I say to you, well, it's the same thing. So if you want to wrap your head around this, feel free. If you remember, it's 1 half base times height. Let's work with that. Let's imagine this triangle again, shall we? If we reimagine this triangle, we have our triangle ABC, and we draw a height because this is not a right triangle, right? We draw a height. We now have our height. It's going to be some h. We don't know what it is. But remember, we know what b is, we know what c is, and we know what angle a is, right? So how do we find the, the area of any triangle? It's 1 half base times height. Well, what is the base? The base is b. And what is the height? We don't know. OK, but we can use trigonometry to find it. Now, if we're looking at this particular right triangle in here, right, bloop, 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 and we happen to know what C is, and we happen to know what angle A is, the measure of angle A, well, guess what we can do? Trig, man. We can totally find out what the height is by using the sine ratio. When you're looking at A, remember that the sine is the opposite leg, opposite leg over the hypotenuse. So the H, the height of the triangle, is the opposite leg. The hypotenuse of this little triangle is this C right here. So we can totally use trigonometry. So the sine of that angle A happens to be the height that we don't know over the hypotenuse that we do know. And so we can think about it this way, and then we can find out what, eight, what the height is. And so how would we solve for H here? You know, of course, we would multiply both sides by C, right? And then we find out that the H is actually C sine of A. That's the height, OK? So we found the height, right? And the area is 1 half base times height. So if, if C times the sine of A is actually the height of the triangle, then this new formula isn't new at all. It's 1 half base times height. OK, so this is the height of the triangle. So if you want to wrestle around like how crazy this formula looks, you can. But do keep in mind, it's just the same thing as we've always known, 1 half base times height. All right, so ain't nothing new if you know what you're looking at. Let's do a couple of examples, yeah? And then we'll call it a day. We're going to have a second video with more trig. So uh, let me move out these other notes because they're kind of shining through. Okay. So a couple of examples to help with that. 
Here we have the area of the triangle, and uh, we have our side angle side. We know these measurements. Okay, so remember was this new, for, well, the old formula first. Area of a triangle, one half base times height, or area of a triangle with side angle side is one half the, uh, the two sides around the sine of the included angle. Okay, so it's crazy. So the way this would work, right, if you want to look at it this way, it's one half the base, right? So this area is, the area is one half the base, 21, times the height. Now, what would the height be? So take a look. This is what I was talking about before. Here's the height, right? This is our h. And to find h, what we're going to do is take the sine of 48, right? Remember how that works. Take the sine of 48. The sine of 48 is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of 48 is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And then if we're to solve for h, we would multiply both sides by 12. And so we find out that h is actually 12 times the sine of 48. 12 times the sine of 48. OK, so look, look how that works. Now, did you have to memorize this, this new formula? No, not really, if you don't want to. Uh, but the rest is calculator work. So the rest is calculator work to figure out what all this is going to be. So how does this work in your calculator? Well, we've got to make sure that everything is uh, on the right setting. And so we're just going to multiply everything we're going to multiply, and then at the end, divide by 2. Right, so 21, we're going to multiply that times 12. And we're going to multiply that times the sine of 48, which is 48 sine and equals. So we've multiplied all of this stuff. And now what we're going to do is divide by 2. Divide by 2 equals. And so we have 93.6. So it depends on what the question is asking for here. It doesn't say. So let's say 93.6 squared centimeters. Uh, maybe it was to the nearest square centimeter, so 94 square centimeters. The rest is figuring out what the question was asking. Okay? So you've got to remember how that trigonometry stuff works with your calculator as well. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. If not, rewind, do it again. But let's do another, another one, shall we? So here's another triangle. And what we're going to do is Find the area of this triangle rounded to the nearest square inch. This one's telling us to the nearest square inch. Okay, so remember, how does this work? We can look at it one of two ways. It doesn't matter. The area of the triangle, one half base times height, or the area of the triangle, knowing side angle side, is one half the two sides that we know times the sine of the included angle. Okay, so it doesn't matter how you're approaching it. I would, I pers I prefer the first one, quite honestly. We're going to imagine an H that's not here. Keep it with the right triangles. Right triangles are so much fun to work with. We have our base of 16. So we know that the area is 1 half the base times the height. Now we're going to do is find out the height. Well, <clears throat> if we're looking at the angle of 34, we know the sine of 34 is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we're going to set that up somewhere else. The sine of 34 degrees is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, so uh, we have our numbers there. And if we're going to solve, we, of course, multiply both sides by 10. Okay, and so we know that h is actually 10 times the sine of 34. Okay, so I don't need to remember so much this new formula, although I definitely used it. Right, does that make sense? Uh, so hopefully that, help, that helps. The rest is calculator work. Okay, so we're going to punch some numbers in. 16 times 10 times times the sine of 34, so times 34 sine. All of that is, uh, is in the numerator, and then we just divide by 2. So we divide by 2 at the very end, and we have uh, 44.735. But here's where we have to read carefully, right? So 44.735. And, the, and then we have to read the direction again. Round your answer to the nearest square inch. That's the nearest whole. OK, so you have to remember that's, that's the nearest whole number. And so if we're going to round this to the nearest whole number, it becomes 45 square inches. Ta-da! And that's how we're bringing back trigonometry. Folks, I'm going to make this into two videos. So stick around for the next video where we start going back into polygons now uh, and, and trigonometry. So we shall return. Hopefully you, were, you did well with this, uh, but we'll come back 
and then start talking about area of polygons with more trig. So take it easy, y'all.